because it's going to be a very, very long sermon. <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> Thank you, Joyce. May the words of my lips and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. To whom do you owe your allegiance? God or man? Peter and the other apostles were clear on this. Acts 5, 29. We must obey God rather than human beings. But hang on. Look at who's arrayed against them. The Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel. Verse 21. An impressive assembly. Verses. Ragamuffin, apparent renegades. What's the difference? That means the apostles were right and the Sanhedrin wrong. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. A sentiment that lies behind Gamaliel's words in verses 38 and 39. If their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. Did Gamaliel have at the back of his mind, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. Jesus is sovereign Lord of all. King of the universe, Lord of the ages, maker of all things, sustainer of life, source of authority, wise and just creator, powerful in majesty, throned in the heavens, sun, moon and stars by your word are upheld. Wisdom unsearchable, fathomless knowledge, past understanding by minds such as ours. Do you believe this? Really, practically, day by day, is this the understanding by which you carry out your life? In my last charge, the diocesan bod who looks after vicarages came for an inspection. There's something strange about this living room, he said. I've just worked out what it is. There's no television. He was right. I didn't and don't have a television set. No ominous black screen in the corner of the room. I can't get out of my mind the image of the telly screen in George Orwell's 1984. Oh, to find a restaurant in Vancouver that doesn't have one. Whom do you trust? 
whom do you obey? Where do you turn to? I'm talking practically, day by day. Isn't God rather old hat? The world has moved on. For first century Palestine, okay. But what does God know about us? How we live our lives, the challenges we face. I mean, come on, get real. That's the very real mindset challenge which I think we're faced with. To whom do the television pundits turn and present us with? The so-called experts who are paid money to look as if they know what they're talking about. They don't, but heaven help them if they were to let on. That's the case. I used to read the New York Times and the Globe and Mail. My namesake, Karl Barth, probably the 20th century's greatest theologian, said, take your Bible and take your newspaper and read both. Perhaps I stand accused of having taken this piece of advice, but neglecting his corollary, but interpret newspapers from your Bible. I told Miles why Donald Trump would not be elected President of the United States. Ross Douthat had said so in the New York Times and I gave his explanation. As I wrote to the Globe and Mail post-election, we are being encouraged to follow Canada's most awarded newsroom as the Globe looks forward to the next four years. Are these the same award-winning journalists that have been telling us consistently for the past 18 months why Donald Trump is unelectable. The letter wasn't published. <laughs> Verse 17. Then the high priest and all his associates who were members of the party of the Sadducees were filled with jealousy. Verse 24. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests were at a loss, wondering what this might lead to. Well, might they wonder. They were at a loss and filled with jealousy, all too human emotions. Didn't the Jerusalem Post have an explanation? Assuming it was controlled by the Sadducees, they would be at a loss. How had the apostles escaped from the public jail? During the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. But the Sadducees didn't believe in angels. It was one of their hallmarks. Peter said, verse 30, The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead. The Sadducees didn't believe in resurrection. This was another of their hallmarks. That's why they were sad, you see. Rather than getting better and better, things were just getting worse and worser from their point of view. Verse 31. 
Verse 14. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. Verse 14. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin, rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped preaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. So, what should we say about this? If God is for us, no one can stand against us, and God is with us. Though mountains shake and tremble, though swirling floods are raging, God the Lord of hosts is with us evermore. Brother Andrew, the Christian missionary known as God's smuggler for his exploits smuggling Bibles to communist countries, said, One man with God is a majority. It is sheer foolishness if you think you can win if you choose to pitch yourself against God. If you find yourself in that situation, please, I beg of you, think again. Peter said, verse 30, The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and saviour, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Jesus is Prince and Saviour, Sovereign, Lord of all. Will you turn to him in repentance and faith even today? God gives the Holy Spirit to all who obey him and one man with God is a majority. O Saviour Christ, our fears dispel, for some are sick, and some are sad, and some have never loved thee well, and some have lost the love they had, and some have found the world is vain, Yet from the world they break not free. And some have friends who give them pain, Yet have not sought a friend in thee. Thy touch has still its ancient power. No word from thee can fruitless fall. Meet with us in this morning hour and in thy mercy heal us all. Amen.